Hello everyone and welcome to Brick Rigs. Uh, today I'm going to be showcasing uh, some advanced weaponry that I have uh, been working on really since I started playing Brick Rigs. So I've always thought the regular guns are fine and all that, but what if you could create working projectiles? So uh, I'm sort of going to take you through the lineage and how I came to this little buddy here. Yeah, for some reason the high explosive charge didn't go off that time. Oh well. Anyway, they're still finicky and still a work in progress. But I'm going to take you through the design process um, in order. Starting uh, with this. So this thing was the first of its kind. And it's sort of, or I guess not the first of its kind, but the first of its kind that I made. And it, pretty much everything is operated manually. So, um, additionally, I didn't exactly know a lot about building at the time, but this was when I was just starting out in Brick Rigs. So, if we look around, you can see there's all this, all these different actuators all over this thing. Uh, we've got elevation, we've got two vertical magazines, and two barrels. Um, yeah, and I forgot, it's been a while since I've actually used this, but you use pitch, pitch control, I think alt pitch, yeah, and so then you push the projectile into the barrel, and this was before I used switches for this, so it's actually, you have to manually activate the thruster, and then it flies out. Because that it's just a thruster and an unguided rocket, basically, it uh, is extremely finicky. And of course, the loading is quite unreliable in the best of days. And sometimes you just get, you get problems like that quite a lot. But you can usually get off a couple shots before everything, you know, decides to stop existing. Um, but yeah, this was sort of the first of this kind of thing. I was just experimenting with it, seeing what I could do, and you have to manually activate all of the rockets, which is kind of a pain. The next thing I came upon was I thought, well, what if I had a different kind of breach system so I didn't have to push things in? And so I realized you could just pick up individual rockets here. Oops, that's... <laughs> you could just pick up individual rockets, and then you can activate them. And so I thought, well, I could probably turn that into a gun if I could have it detect when I put a rocket there. And so that sort of sped up the, the slow loading process quite a lot, although the projectiles were still very inaccurate and uh, not that powerful. With those ones, you could actually pack some explosives into it because it was a multi-piece shell. But with this, you have to, all your explosive power comes from the thruster because you have to be able to pick it up to put it in the breach. Um, so it wasn't very uh, reliable, but it was fun to use. And it sort of proved the concept to work at closer range, at least. Then I came to this. I was sort of thinking on what if I could make like large scale um, artillery with this. And that's kind of what we have here. So if I lower down the breach, I think that's, wait a minute. Okay, that's pitch. It's been so long since I've used this stuff. And of course, loading is finicky as usual and is far more likely to just eject your shell. Um, this one was one of the less successful designs, just purely because that it didn't really do its job very well. Um, it was even more unreliable than the other two, and was harder to automate in the end, so it sort of fell by the wayside.
You can get a shell in, though. It's quite powerful. It just doesn't like to do that very much. There we go. So the shell's in. And now we have a vertically sliding breach that uh, goes up. Now the shell is in the barrel. We can target it around and fire it. These shells um, had fins inside stabilizing them. You can see them sort of poking out on the sides here. And that sort of kept them from flip-flopping everywhere uh, and becoming a huge problem. So next I wanted to work on smaller stuff. And there was there's quite a big time difference between when I messed with these three and what we have over here. Over here is when I started to figure out, hey, maybe I can use switches to control these things. So what this is, is like as simple as you can get. It's a wheel with lots of shells on it. And all you do is you hit that, pops a shell into the chamber, you hit the switch, shell flies and goes boom. Um, not much to it. Simple, but it also has problems like that, like what you see right there. And that's just, I didn't even really misalign it that much. And it was already having a huge, you know, I was struggling to feed. And so you couldn't really automate that the same way you could with something with like a magazine. Because you need to have it feed consistently. Like, see, you couldn't have that, that wouldn't work if it was, yeah, that, <laughs> clearly that's not, exactly what we want right so next i moved to this now this is um sort of a cassette type autoloader so it loads the shells in sideways and then a little uh feed bit pulls it up and then pushes it with this rammer into the gun tube and this is sort of like the where i am right now in terms of just the technology um, so if I hit, what was it? Was it, uh, yeah, there it is. Action four. And then you can see it just pushes it right in. It's quite reliable in single player. Got a little camera here so I can just activate the switch whenever I want. You can also aim it. And, and then it flies. Another thing. And the reason, one of the reasons that I used um, switches for these shells is so that it would fire, actually have some uh, timers inside the projectiles that make it so the rocket only fires for a certain amount of time, enough to clear the barrel. That way, the barrel can actually work for accuracy, and the shell won't go flying off in a random direction. It When it actually, when the shell actually leaves the barrel um, in multiplayer, which doesn't happen with too much frequency, unfortunately. Still working on that. But it's much like much more likely to go straight than if it was just powered and was um, flying with the rocket the whole time because then little random deviations are amplified by the lag of multiplayer and it just goes zigging off into the sky. Um, yeah, you can... Here, let me load another round so you guys can take a look here. Oop, and it does that too sometimes. Yeah, so... Oh, for crying out loud. <laughs> Usually the first shot works just fine. Yeah, you can see it pulls it up, and then it tries to ram it into the gun tube. I like it now that I say that it's kind of reliable, it just isn't working at all. Um, but once... Yeah, once a round is in... You can see that the other ones are sort of pushed into place by a little pusher there. And I use a little detection sensor inside that, um, that end wall on the magazine there to help it detect when there's a shell or when there's not a shell in that spot. So, and then there's the next round. And so, you know, this is great and all, but I want to be able to use this thing practically. So I thought, okay, well, next step is really just to put it onto a vehicle. And I had this uh, pretty lame 
uh, chassis laying around from a tank destroyer project that I never really went through on because it was kind of bad. Um, lots of wheels. But this thing is now... Uh, it's, it's just... It's a mobile... It, it's that on a mobile platform. So it can turn, you know, it's got some semblance of armor. And of course, you can, oh, that one went really weird. Anyhow, so it, it's still unreliable and I'm still working on trying to fix that. So it's not completely consistent, but if any of these projectiles really touch a vehicle, the vehicle's going to explode. It, the blast radius on these suckers is so big that it will almost 100% reach the engine or fuel tanks or whatever is explosive on that vehicle and just annihilate it. So next we come to this thing, and it's got some pretty obvious inspiration from the, uh, the Maus tank, which is a German super heavy uh, tank during World War II. Never really, they never used it, and it just sort of sat there being sad, but... Uh, you know, Rick Riggs doesn't really care about development costs and pesky losing wars and stuff like that. So it's here in all of its glory. Um, and it's actually got this autoloader inside. Uh, I had to redesign the autoloader a little bit on the barrel end so that I could actually have it go through the solid mantlet here. But you can see that there's actually just a hole that goes all the way into the turret. Um, we just hop in, this thing does, uh, it does drive, so that's, uh, that's all good, and it also, um, will, it will shoot as well, so if I just go to here, and I can load the gun, like so, and then we can, let's just, uh, let's annihilate those uh, test beds over there. Like that one. That looks good. And then we can, I'm just going to fire it in third person so you guys can see it here. One downside to this design is that if there are allies on your team, they can also interact with the switches. Oh, for crying out loud. Does it never work when I want it to? No, it really doesn't. Though. Okay. Let's try that again. Loading another round, and it's just okay. <sighs> anyway, it's still a work in progress technology, but... Um, it will surely become better, and I'm planning to do a battleship turret next, um, hopefully using 2x2 two two projectiles, like in this one, uh, except for they'll use the uh, switch design with like these so that they will fire temporarily. Oh boy. Um, so that they'll just fire one, and then they'll be good to go. Yeah, just, just to show you what actually happens, let's see if I can get this one to fire. So um, we're going to aim at a mouse over there. And then... And as you can see, it just completely destroyed that thing. It, I mean, it's... <laughs> you, can act, you can see the, uh, the turret ring from uh, these prototypes here on the turret inside the gun has been dislodged, all the ammunition has been destroyed, um, and though it has quite the spectacular effect on this vehicle, it would have almost just as much on a smaller vehicle without any explosives, you know, packed into the ammo rack, because that really, it doesn't, it doesn't matter what it's going to hit, like, let me just grab a tank that I made, um, sure, why not this one? This is like a little assault gun I made here. But anyway, for testing purposes, let's just uh, slap it over here. And, uh, yep, there we are. 
and load up a shell. Good chunk. Aim at the target. And this uh, this vehicle does not have any explosives crammed inside or anything. It's just got uh, an engine and some fuel tanks. Um, and it's pretty durable from the front. But this thing is just going to blow it away. There, there's no there's no chance for, for it, you know. Unless I miss. In which case, uh, I'm screwed. <laughs> yeah, so accuracy and reliability are major problems, but the actual devastation of a projectile when it actually gets there is not a problem at all. So, yeah, as you can see, that, uh, that vehicle has been disabled. And by disabled, I mean it's taken the back half of the tank and sort of removed it from the other half of the tank. It's blown all the wheels off. It's destroyed all the actuators. You can see the guns just flopping around, ragdolling. It definitely, 100%, would have killed anyone inside. Um, and the wheels have been scattered to the far corners of the Earth. So that's why I've been investing in this technology, just because it's ridiculously powerful when you can get a shot on target. And I'm hoping that with the larger size of these uh, two by two shells, it should be a little bit more reliable because I can put some fins in there to stabilize it. And it'll also, it's also just a lot easier to work with larger objects because with these little ones, you gotta have all this kind of spacing just perfect. But uh, with the larger ones, it should be a lot easier to, for instance, guide it into the barrel without problem. And the barrels should be a little bit more reliable too because sometimes projectiles will get stuck. But other than that, these are just ridiculously devastating and um, are, I think, the, the next sort of evolution in Brick Rig's weaponry. Because for a long time, it's just been the autocannon. And the autocannon is really great for a lot of things. Uh, for instance, lagging servers, being annoying, um, and feeling kind of cheap to use. But with this, there's a whole lot going on. There's a whole lot of design work. You've got to put in the work to to make a successful design. Also, these shells, when you activate the thrusters, will fly out backwards because of the way that I bound the inputs. Um, they also don't produce any smoke, and I have no idea what's actually going on with those. But anyway, um, this has been my summary of my weapons development uh, for this time in Brick Rigs, and uh, I'll see you guys next time.